Well, we all drink tea, so buy a new kettle is energy efficient and you're going to save 10 quid a year. But it won't matter because you're going to freeze to death this winter. All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Texas Dad, and this is not Matt. This is Texas Mom sitting in for Matt. And we wanted to do a, another watch along video um, because we keep hearing about this particular issue. And once again, like a lot of our topics that we continue to bring up, discuss, look at, and talk about, these are global issues that aren't exclusively here in America. They're all part of a larger global agenda to crush humanity, for lack of a, I mean, you know, and, and the strange thing about this is people say, oh, you're fear mongering. They're not really doing this. Like when you, when you say that the USDA wants to, you know, they want you to log and report your garden. It's not to monitor you. Well, of course it's to monitor you. I mean, that's the whole, that's why they do everything. That's why they want you to register everything. That's why you register your vehicle. Why do you register a vehicle? So they can tax you on it. Like exactly what this video is talking about. If they're predicting that it's going to happen and they're saying it's going to happen, wisdom would tell you, okay, oh, so they're, they're predicting that this is gonna happen, then if it's gonna happen three months from now, that means I have time to prepare. Now, this specific video that we're gonna be reviewing today is about energy crisis and uh, warming your home for the winter time. And if we see that it's not just happening over there, we're seeing that it's not just happening here. You know, last year, we had massive power outages from our snow apocalypse, and it was a lot of that, a lot of the energy problems that we had were government generated and government made by artificial restrictions. And Texas tried to bring in the power and they were stopped and it was a political game and people, there, uh, millions of homes were damaged and pipes broke and stuff was destroyed. And it was all geopolitical, geopolitical shenanigans. So what did we do? We put in two extra wood burning stoves preparing for this winter because we saw the reality, <laughs> we saw the facts, we saw that was coming. We keep hearing all this net zero, net zero, net zero. And what net zero means is, you know, we're the CO2, y'all. When you see information and you provide people with information, it's to educate them so that they can consume that information and respond and react accordingly. We could be like a lot of these channels and be all Pollyanna and look at this and look, I'm picking these flowers and ooh, ah, and, and, and just be all like uh, Stepford and uh, blue fleecy cloud and everything's honky dory and great, but that's not reality. And we're Christians. So, and at the same time, one, we believe and we, want to purvey the truth, but two, we have wisdom and we have understanding and we want to, one, apply it in our own lives and also share it with others. That's common sense. That's the way life was. You know, when everybody went through the Great Depression, they learned from it, they came out the other side and they were, it was really important for them to store food. It wasn't because they were fear mongers. I mean, just the, the whole notion of uh, somebody said, oh, you're, you're going full Alex Jones or whatever. And I mean, clearly that's not the case. We're dealing with practical items, practical issues that directly impact us. So the video we wanna talk about, it's a really quick Sky News video from the UK. Sky News, they're located in Australia and there's some kind of conservative news network thing. And they're talking to Nigel Farage in the UK talking about the the bleak winter coming for the UK. So let's get started. Texas mom, did you have anything that you wanted to interject at the start of this video? No, I'm excited to see it. Okay. Well, isn't Great Britain a bit of a basket case at the moment? They still haven't come up with a replacement for outgoing PM Boris Johnson. That process has not wound up, although Apparently, all will be revealed on Tuesday morning our time. Meanwhile, the UK is facing a colossal power crisis with blackouts, 
and widespread fuel poverty creating a very difficult upcoming winter. With the UK relying on gas to heat 80% of all households and the supply of gas reaching emergency levels, as we know, across Europe, power bills have tripled and are predicted to go even higher. All those net zero promises by 2050 seem rather irrelevant at the moment. Joining me now live from London is former Brexiteer and now broadcaster Nigel Farage, who will arrive in Australia later this month. All right, y'all. Hey, I just wanted to mention, since Matt's not here, check out our website, thetexasboys.com. We have a little farm store there. We sell our things. We have coffee, tea, candles, and whatnot. We have really cool merch. We have great t-shirts, stickers, bumper stickers. So check it out. It supports us. We greatly appreciate it. We appreciate the community and all the love and all the support. We appreciate all the kind packages and all the correspondence that we have from people all around the world. We just got a package today from Australia, mate. And it was far out. So we love it. And we love just being able to interact with that. We get uh, postcards and letters all the time. And it is the coolest thing. And many times it's people from the UK and Australia. And I mean, how awesome is that? And I mean, look, that's what this is all about. This isn't left or right. And this isn't like, uh, this is about mankind, right? <laughs> and be kind to man, right? <laughs> this is about, you know, and so we don't hate you if you're in a different country. And this isn't about uh, British imperialism or anything. This is about people that want to, I mean, we're Christians. We want to honor and glorify and serve God. And we want to love our neighbor as ourselves. And that's our neighbor that lives next door, or that's our neighbor in Australia, you know, or that's our neighbor in the UK, or fill in the back. That's our neighbor in China. That's our neighbor in India, you know. So, but check out our web store. We appreciate it. So, what's happened is all of these politicians and technocrats said the sky is falling. We're all going to freeze to death. We're all going to melt to death. So, we have to tackle climate change. So, here's how we're going to do it. And we're going to create, we're going to take this climate change crisis and we're going to create many more crises from it and then we'll react to each one of them so now this coming winter in the uk because of all these um green initiatives and all these cutbacks and a world war three that's going on the proxy war between the, the the u.s proxy war between the ukraine and russia and the restriction of gas there um and gas flows to uh, the UK, now the UK is uh, dangerously short on gas and 80% of the homes in the UK are heated with natural gas. So there's clearly, so is this fear porn or is this a fact? I mean, this is a fact. So if you had this fact and you knew it in advance and you could prepare, that would be a smart thing. That would be a wise thing. I mean, we've, we've done bitty, videos about beef shortages and you'll get like, there ain't no beef shortage. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course there is. You know, there's, and of course it's going to be, I mean, many, 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 many people are talking about it and they're giving the reasons and the statistics behind it and why, right? They're giving the logic, the ration and the reason behind why it's going to happen and why it's going to be even more create a greater impact in next year. So anyway, let's get back to the video. Nigel, I hope you're planning to stay in Australia for the British winter. I can only imagine how cold it's going to get when the gas runs out. Well, you're right. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it, that for a first world country, you know, today's Sunday newspapers are full of whether we're going to have to have energy rationing or whether, if we do get a very cold winter in February, literally the lights could go out, which means no heating. Uh, it'll mean basically life will come to a stop and tens of thousands will die of cold. And all of this because 20 years ago, we passed a Climate Change Act. We updated it with this massive commitment to net zero. The absolute reality about all this stuff, right, is... You know who's going to freeze to death, y'all? Mm -hmm. Poor people. Mm -hmm. Poor people, old people. Mm -hmm. They love killing poor people. They love killing old people. Mm -hmm. They love killing poor people in old, and old people in the name mm -hmm. of helping and feeding and saving mm -hmm. poor people and old people. And this is the reality of the technocratic oligarchy and these 
these unilateral decisions mm -hmm. made by power brokers, right? Mm -hmm. Unelected, most of them, and many of them elected at these mm -hmm. G summits, right? This global nonsense, right? Just globalization, global trash, why we, can't, why, why we can't all be our own nations and why we all can't just leave each other alone mm -hmm. and we all mind our own business and do our own thing, right? Well, you can't kill enough old people and poor people. In reality, people out in the country, even in the UK, they're gonna be much less affected by this than somebody in a high rise, somebody in an apartment building, uh, someone in an assisted living facility. When there's no gas and they turn it off, it's not there, right? And you get cold, and how do you fix that? You don't, and that's what's great. I mean, that's why this is, the perfect plan for them. And that's why this is an excellent crisis. And then they'll blame somebody. Mm -hmm. They'll blame somebody from, you know, the conservatives or this or that, and they'll point fingers. Meanwhile, poor people and old people are dead. Absolutely. And the one thing that we can do, knowing that this is our situation here too as well, this is a potential for us going into the winter. I don't know the statistics on it and exactly um, how big of a risk we are facing going into this winter, but if the UK is facing it and Australia is facing it and other countries, I mean, we might as well just um, put it on our radar too, something to pray about, but something also to act upon. And I would say that if you have the means um, to go ahead and and do these things and put these things in place. Go ahead and get a wood stove installed. Go ahead and buy a generator. Buy two if you have the means to do it. Buy extra, buy an extra heater, an extra small generator that you can share with neighbors. I mean, that's what we did when we first moved here. We were super blessed that the community that we had moved into unknowingly, they were very prepared people and when we lost power for a week and it, everything was iced over, we had a neighbor and, and another neighbor too, but we had one neighbor come around and he said, I have enough generators for a few different families in this, in this neighborhood. And, and he had these little propane heaters and he said, I have enough of these little heaters to go around and help. Um, do you need a heater? And we said, yes, we do. And, and he had supplies. So when you're prepping and preparing, it's not just for you and your family, but think about your immediate neighborhood and people around you, because it's a very good likelihood that you might be the one that could be a blessing to somebody else if there is a family that is not prepared, that does not have the means to prepare. And we've all been in those situations before where we just weren't in a position that we had the means to prepare that way. But if you are blessed and you have some type of means to prepare, especially when it comes to heat, water, just your basic things, extra blankets, things like that, um, that is a really great thing to do, I think. Just be community minded. Right, and the, I mean, the reason we know if it's happening there, it's coming here because of all this global nonsense, because of all this climate change, because of all this Kyoto Treaty, mm -hmm. and all these G summits and these this intergalactic technocratic panopticon. And you know what the most frustrating thing about energy consumption is, right? And this is classic. Um, well, you can't, um, California, we're gonna outlaw gas cars, but don't plug in your Tesla car, right? Because it's gonna hog the grid. Meanwhile, these Panopticon track trace databases, these gigantic underground water cooled databases where they're storing all your data, you know, these uh, Microsoft databases and these different I don't know how many of y'all know about these underground databases. They're gigantic electrical cities and they're water cooled. So one, they're stealing fresh water to cool these hard drives, right? So they're stealing the fresh water that farmers use, fresh water that people drink to spy on you. They're stealing your water to spy on you. And then they're sucking all this energy and all this power to run all these mainframe databases like 
1.21 gigawatts, y'all, like straight up flux capacitor status kind of power to run these things without exaggeration. And like medium to small cities, mm -hmm. this database, and it's exclusively to spy on us. They're gonna steal our water so we can't drink it to spy on us. And they're stealing the power to spy on us, but all of us have to cut back. Sounds like a good video. It sounds like a really good video. We all gotta cut back, right? <laughs> well, you, you, uh, the poor and the old people, they gotta freeze to death this winter, right? right? So that um, the technocrats can spy on you and they got all your metadata. Well, no, so we can save the planet. You're, right, well, and save saying, the planet. Right. As long as saving the planet involves running a super gigantic silicone database that, that hogs an enormous amount of power and destroys an enormous amount of fresh water. I'm thinking of a, of a Bible verse right now. Imagine what? a vain thing. Oh yeah, it's a vain and it's an imagined. What's more than them imagining a vain thing is them constructing and fabricating a lie. Absolutely. It talks about them that love a lie. What it means to, to, to sort of meet those targets, what you have to do is close down your manufacturing, let all that go to India and China, because that reduces your CO2 output. And then with energy, build lots and lots of windmills, tax the poor, put loads of subsidies on their bills, give it to the rich, give it to the multinationals, and don't produce your own gas. Don't. Pro this is what's insane about all this energy power stuff, is China and India can do absolutely whatever they want. Period, carte blanche, whatever they want, right? They can burn all the coal, they can burn all the gas, they can do all the stuff. They are unencumbered, nor would they even care to follow it anyway, right? And so all of that is going, so the rest of us have to play by these rules, you know, that they don't have to play by and they're not gonna play by. And even if we could go net zero, they're still gonna create all this pollution and do all these things. Meanwhile, all that infrastructure goes there, right? And all that get, you know, it's just like, it's just like manufacturing, right? When Heinz Kissinger and Brzezinski handpicked China to, to do all that, right? So all the manufacturing went to China, right? So we could keep it here and we could abide by our own um, green standards that we have in place, which we make things cleaner and cleaner every year. Technology gets better. Absolutely, we get more efficient at things, or we can just, in the name of- Sky is falling. <laughs> we must react now. We can't plan ahead. We can't work right. towards it. It's just, it's crisis. It's gotta be cataclysmic. And when it comes to climate change, the reason it has to always be cataclysmic change is because their predictions never come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And now that we're in this grand solar minimum cycle, right? And now that they absolutely scientifically show that the temperature is dropping, right? They're like, dude, we got to speed this we gotta up. got to cash in on it fast. We got to speed it up because if we don't speed it up Absolutely. in 10 years, everybody's going to be like, hey man, it's way cooler than it was mm -hmm. 10 years ago. It's like three or four degrees, you know? Oh, and the sea levels are still where they were 20 years ago. It's got to happen fast. You know, and that's why Al Gore and Obama are buying beachfront property because they're really worried about it, like going underwater and all this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just a bunch of lying hypocrites, fakes that, you know, get paid. Don't produce your own coal. Don't produce enough of your own oil. That is the mess that we've got into. And the extraordinary thing is, you know, you'd have thought this was all hard left socialist stuff. No, it's the British Conservative Party. Yep. It's Boris Johnson and others that have pushed this really, really hard. And anyone that dares to stand. It's the Conservative Party here in America. They all jumped on this green thing and even muskerdoodle, you know, Elon Musk, who's telling you to vote Republican now to save the democracy and all this stuff. He's all straight up all on the global warming. You know, you can't be a climate change denier. You know, he wants to plug us into the AI so that, you know, well, the AI will destroy us. So the only way you can beat the AI is to merge with the AI. So we'll all go net zero and we'll let We'll farm all of our industry and all of our fuel and energy making out to 
other countries and we'll let them them do the nasty things and and we can pat ourselves on the back and say, look at what a great job we're doing being net zero. Meanwhile, we're cutting our nose off to spite our face. Yeah, because with all that, even if we let them do some of it, we'll only have subsidized portions of it. And so we'll be rationed, we'll be browned out and all these other things. And it's just, and it's just a shell game. It's just, it's a con. It's a very long con That's all it is. And the right, look, we have a t-shirt. It's not about right and left. It's about right and wrong. And the right is in on this scam and the left is in on this scam. And the right might chirp up and be a little less on board with the scam, but they're still totally on board with the scam. So we won't sub out our food production to China, but we're going to sub out our energy production to China. But we already sub out our food production right. to China. Right, I know, but I'm just saying that most people are like, oh, no, China, no, China, no, right, China. Right, right, right. Yeah. Stand up and say, hang on a second, what are we doing? Well, we are called deniers. It's the modern day equivalent of being accused of witchcraft. That's the mess we're in, and you guys should avoid it. Yeah, this is a big lesson to all of Australia. And see, we've just had an election uh, after which... The left claimed victory in the climate wars. Everyone gravitated towards the independent, pushing extreme views on climate um, zeros and, and cars, petrol cars to be thrown out by 2030, all of that stuff. But the truth is, Nigel, Russia and a lack of baseload power across the world has changed this green religion incredibly. We're seeing it in Britain. A lot has changed since then. And those that are claiming victory in the climate wars need to think very seriously about whether they're happy to live a very primitive existence. Yes, I mean, basically, what you're talking about is not having a motor car, uh, not, getting, not getting on an aeroplane to go on a foreign holiday. You're talking about diminishing living standards. I mean, that's actually what they want. And, yep. and uh, you know, oh, by the way, you've got to stop eating beef. Stop eating lamb. I, I mean, the whole thing's unbelievable, but that's what they That's what's wild about the whole thing. It's not just about, well, you can't have a car, you know, or you can't be productive, or you don't have the, you won't have the liberty to go anywhere or do anything. But like, while we're at it, uh, we're gonna control what you eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want complete and total control. And while we're telling you about how we're gonna save Mother Gaia, right and save the earth and oh and obviously if you're against this that's because you want to destroy the environment right mm -hmm. you didn't plant mm -hmm. 400 fruit trees you don't you don't try to use permaculture principles mm -hmm. and rotationally graze your animals mm -hmm. and not use pesticides you didn't do any of that stuff no you're you're a climate change denier so you want to destroy the environment mm -hmm. and and you want to kill all the old people and the poor people right cool story what they're pushing now i think once we have a proper debate about this, the settled majority will be there for common sense. And yes, uh, Putin has now put the squeeze on and has announced in the last 48 hours that the Nord Stream 1 pipeline that goes into Germany will not be reopening. So Putin has frankly got the West by the short and curlies. And the West, very stupidly, doesn't produce its own energy. Some countries can't. We in the UK have gas reserves estimated to be worth a trillion, I mean it, a trillion dollars, and we haven't as yet extracted a single barrel. So here's the problem. We get a new prime minister in the next two days. It's going to be Liz Truss, I've no doubt. Even if she says, right, I get it, let's become energy independent, it'll take a couple of years to get there. So goodness knows what happens between now and then. What a terrible, horrendous two years you'll face. Do you think, though, she's heading in that direction? Has the, the, the penny dropped for Liz Truss? Well, she says she's still committed to net zero, um, but we must produce more of our own energy. It's at least a step in the right direction. Um, all that Boris Johnson recommends is that we all buy a new kettle because it, it'll use less electricity and save us 10 quid a year. What a legacy for a British Prime Minister. Let's see. I am certain there'll be very, very strong pressures. How classic is that? You know, that's a politician before you. Well, we all drink tea, so buy a new kettle is energy efficient, and you're going to save 10 quid a year. 
but it won't matter because you're going to freeze to death this winter. Oh, my soul. I mean, I, I would definitely say on the more practical side, if at all possible, look for some heating alternatives. Um, this is for our friends in Australia. This is for our friends in the UK. We know we have people all over who watch our channel um, of course for us in the u.s as well um, and that's what we said like we went out this summer and we got two wood stoves while they were still available because we learned our lesson that and last they, and, winter and, and they weren't available right. the generators weren't available it was a it was a frenzy well and not only that they weren't that available when we got them we had to wait for them and we got them in the springtime Yes. Well, you don't need them till the winter time. Why would you get them so early? Well, yes. because you plan ahead. That's why. <laughs> Absolutely. And we had to order them through our local hardware store and they came in and we got them and the boys got them in place for us. So we're we are okay to go there. And then, you know, other practical things is of course you're going to need wood to burn to get in there. So to to heat your home. So taking those steps and now, I mean, we had it on our list since last year was one of our priorities was to have more firewood. Um, for this winter, for going into this winter. And we're in Texas, y'all. We don't have long, harsh winters, but most of the country does. And I know you all um, over in the UK, absolutely, you have way harsher, longer winters than us here. So take the steps now, if at all possible. Within Westminster, within Whitehall, within number 10, to try and stop her going for genuine energy exploration. Uh, but I think if enough of us as commentators, broadcasters, politicians and newspapers, if enough of us shout loudly, I think something will get done. Whether it it'll be to. enough remains to be seen. Yeah, it has to. Now, you'll be here in three weeks' time and holding your entertaining evening with Nigel Farage events in Melbourne, September 26th, the Monday, in Sydney on Tuesday, the 27th of September, and in Brisbane, Thursday, the 29th of September. You're obviously going to talk about the similarities between the Conservative parties in Britain and Australia, because it's stark, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean in fact, right across the English-speaking world, we face the same challenges, we face the same problems, uh, and kind of... You know, the capital cities seem to infect the brains of so-called conservative politicians. They all seem to move to the left. They all seem to move to the centre. They all seem to become Labour light. And then they're surprised when they lose elections. And the lesson I've learned, certainly from the Conservative Party, when I, I kicked them hard again and again and again, and in 2019, they actually stood on a genuine Conservative manifesto. And guess what? They got the biggest majority since Margaret Thatcher. Uh, and, and the same applies in Australia, the same applies elsewhere. It's no good being labour like. If you're Conservative, be Conservative. Reduce the size of the state. Give people incentives to set up their own businesses. Get the dead hand of government off the backs of people. And, and, and that's what needs to be done. And, you know, look at the lockdowns. Look at what... Australian people were made to go through. Um, now, I know a lot of this was the fault, of course, of the local states, but actually, did Scott Morrison stand up for liberty during the pandemic? Well, I think we know the answer. One quick one. What do you think Boris Johnson will do now? Not that you'd probably care, but what will he do? Oh, he'll be in America. He'll be in America. I mean, look, you know, whatever his flaws, he is actually rather fun. He is entertaining. Yeah. And after a few glasses of wine, he gives a very good after-dinner speech. <laughs> he will go and he will make millions. He will entertain and amuse people. Uh, and then he may consider a comeback, because I think, I think the British Conservatives, unless Trust can really turn this around, they're heading for an absolute walloping at the next general election. And who knows? Boris may try to come back. We'll see you soon. De so you see, so this whole left-right paradigm, this two wings of the same foul bird, like, oh, they stood for these real conservative things and they had this red wave and it was great, but now they're going to get walloped. It's just the same cycle of this 
uniparty thing. And that's he, what he is explaining is the uniparty. It's the same thing we have here. It's the left and it's right. Mm -hmm. And they're both different versions of the same party. It's a uniparty and it ebbs and flows. And we make these supposed excuses like, well, the market wants this and blah, blah, blah. And it's, and it's just the same stuff and the beat goes on. And meanwhile, now there's not enough power, there's not enough gas, and old people and poor people have to die. And that's always the solution is, well, I mean, and really when you think about it, they're all Malthusian and they don't, there's, there's too many people. I mean, how many comments do we get all the time? Well, there's too many people on the planet. The real problem is there's just too many people on the planet. And everybody that comes to this stark realization that there's too many people on the planet, none of them want to leave, you know? I say, hey, if you're committed to this and you think it's real, hey, help us all out. You know, you, you, you know, take, 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 a, take a flight, you know what I mean? I say if there's too many people where you are, move because there's lots of wide open spaces still. There's plenty of land where there are uh, way less people <laughs> you can drive for miles and miles easy with the logic Texas and mom. never see Come anybody on. so if it's populated and overpopulated where you are move you're so Pollyanna <laughs> you can't just do that you can't just move I mean we might have to ask farmers to move their entire operation but you, you know you as a human individual you obviously can't just move I, I mean I thought it was kind of funny too that Boris Johnson's gonna like go on tour and entertain people and make millions of dollars. And I was just like, wow, well, he'll fit in really great in with America because uh, that's what all the American presidents do. Absolutely, they all aggrandize themselves. They become multimillionaires, and they fade into obscurity, and they keep mm -hmm. their Secret Service the rest of their life, and they just stay on that public tee and do all their inside deals and get paid. Actually, who knows? Boris may try to come back. We'll see you soon, Dan Under. Nigel Farage, thank you very much for your time. Wow. All right, Nigel, thank you very much, Nigel. But yeah, so you're saying, so just like this uh, energy crisis that is going to happen in the UK, the same energy crisis is going to happen here. Now, the advantage, we're always a couple years behind them, right? But once again, it's all these G summits and all these things mm -hmm. and this net zero by X date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we know that if they're doing and implementing all the things that they want to implement here, that we're going to have the same issues. Just like we had those power issues last winter yep. because of geopolitical shenanigans and party infighting and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one thing when you care about people is, you know, you got to block power, tra you know, energy transfer so that you know, old people freeze to death mm. and pipes break and you create millions of dollars in damage. And then you do some kind of federal emergency and you release a bunch of printed money, mm -hmm. you know, because you create the problem and then you mm. do handouts so that that money can be wasted and stuffed in people's brother-in-law's pockets and all Horrible. that stuff. So do what you can with what you have, where you're at. And if you have the means, um, take note of these things prepare uh, not just for yourself like i said but for others in your community um, if you have loved ones that are in um, assisted uh, facilities or in apartment complexes bring these issues to the attention of the staff and the people and and tell them your concerns so that way they can start to prepare now and make these plans because this could be um, it could just be a really sad situation all the way around. So with that, I guess. I guess that about sums it up, y'all. Thanks for watching the video. Like, share, subscribe, uh, share it with your friends. But yeah, there's definitely going to be some uh, power and heating issues. And if it's not this year, look, if you plan for it in this year and you set it up and you have the infrastructure in place mm -hmm. and you've planned ahead, it might happen next year or the following year. They're not going to quit on this green stuff, right. right? They they want to just, you know, it's just they keep telling you, the left and the right, they keep telling Absolutely. you, and they're going to do it. So you can at least prepare. Absolutely. Instead of just saying, you know, there are no weeds, there are no weeds. That's right. Get your generators, get your fuel ready, get your firewood ready. Do what you can. Do what you can. All right, y'all. We'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.